Next, we have this little pink box, and this contains uh, all kinds of letterings. Okay, so let me go ahead and turn these on and go ahead and render this. Okay, so here what we have is this text node is creating this line on the bottom. The ones, these two text nodes are creating these two. And I have two because I have a bold text and a non bold text. Okay. And then there's these XF9 and 10, which are the transform nodes that are going to push the text uh, to the side. And there's also transform position nodes here. And the reason why they are in there, I remember, is because I had set up this animation a certain way, but I went back in and I wanted to uh, place them somewhere else at a later time. So that's why instead of redoing the location in the text nodes, I made new nodes uh, just to move them around. That way I could take them out and go back to my first way if I wanted to. And also, if you look at how they're starting, uh, there is an excess of uh, motion blur on them for a long time as they're sliding in. So remember, these are being used right now, not as words that you're going to read in the intro, but uh, more like a, a shape animation or a design element. Okay. And then let's go to the last one and render this out. Okay. So now we have the Jeremy text. This is the first time uh, in the first 60 frames or so that we're using the text node not as a design element, but we're actually using it for the text itself, okay? So if you look here, you can see that we are now, for the first time, revealing Jeremy C in text to establish the name and, and what's going on, okay? So there is an animation on this text node for size and tracking, as well as there is a animation that's pushing it to the left, and that's separate. And in the merge, I have an animation for the blend, uh, which is fading it in. All right, let's move ahead. So on to act number two. So as you can see, act one was this sort of 45 frame long slide animation. So there's, there's going to be three or four slides for this, this whole animation. That's the way it's set up right now. Okay, so now over here, these yellow bars, they are showing me the render range. So I'm going to change that. So we were rendering 10 to 70. Now we're going to render from, say, let's do 55 to 120. Okay, so this is going to be section number two. Okay, zoom in. All right, and go ahead and render this. Okay, in the second section, the first node that we have is a media node, and that is bringing in this footage of Jeremy playing a piano. And then if I zoom in a little bit, you've got a, before I move on, in the inspector, if you notice, I have it on looped, so it's actually looping, all right? And then I have a resize node uh, because the footage itself was not uh, exactly this resolution, so I had to go ahead and add that in. And once you add it in, It'll automatically go to your project settings. And then there is some color correction. So the first one is just desaturating the footage to make it black and white. The second one is uh, giving it this blue color, as you can see right here. And then I have some sort of curves adjustments here. And you have to pipe these in uh, into the effects mass. Otherwise, all your composition is going to be affected by the color corrector nodes, of course. And then there's the blur node. So what I'm doing is I'm going to show this footage of uh, Jeremy blurred, and then I'm going to show the same thing without the blur. And you'll see this in a moment. And then there's the transform node that's moving the image over. Okay. Uh, one thing I'm going to give you a pro tip here uh, when I'm working with uh, this sort of thing is I want to render this next um, section of my nodes. I don't really want to go back and render anything else. So what I'm going to do is take this merge, disconnect it, and then connect this over. So basically, everything that happened up until now is not going to be 
connected and it's not going to render at all. Okay, so let's go and look at the next set of nodes. And these are just um, uh, these are just bands, but they're not being created by letters. They're actually being created by the background node. And then you have transform nodes to uh, move them over. So if you look at the spline here, you can see uh, what kind of animation it is. It's a very fast start and then a very slow stop. Okay. So everything that you're seeing here uh, is very stylized. Okay. There's there's not a lot of utility uh, animation here. It's all meant to entertain and to make it look very exciting and fast. And it looks like Fusion is hung and about to crash. Not to worry. It's part of uh, part of life. Uh, when you, especially when you're working with a lot of expressions and a lot of nodes, it will crash on you sometimes. You just you just have to shake it off and keep going. And we were back. So we had the uh, footage slide in from the left. And then we had these three bars. They're just color block, you know, uh, boxes using the same colors from the palette that we chose. Okay. And then you're going to have the actual footage slide in. So because it's following so closely, you're just going to get a sort of glimpse at the blur one. And then you're going to see the non blur one for a lot longer. So that's what's going to stay with you. Okay. As I go, I'm going to move this render range up. Okay. And then here, there's a jerk. This is one of my favorite techniques. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to go from um, a slightly bigger size. As you can see, there's a size animation. And just a frame or two later, I'm going to pull back uh, really fast without any spline animation. So it's going to be like a little jerk that will happen and you'll see it. Okay. And then there's also a slide that's going on. And now in this uh, sort of area, it's going to get a little bit, a little bit complicated. So right here, I have the, as you notice, the footage was only imported once. And then I have the resize node going here. And then the same resize node is outputting to this. So it's actually the same footage. If I were to go back and change the footage, it would change in both the blur look and the non blur look. Okay. Moving on. So you have these little bands come forward and you're looking at these pipes and you're going, okay, what's going on, right? Like, why are they interdependent? Well, this is kind of what. Fusion's node system is actually meant to do. Okay. The rest is just going from left to right, uh, straight, you know, pipe to pipe, uh, merge to merge, background to foreground, and so on. So that's all very much the same as working with layers. Over here, when you look at these sort of interdependent pipes, this is actually what the node system or the node uh, methodology allows you to do and why it's um, a faster, more superior uh, method for more complex effects. So what we are doing here is you have this dark brown slide come up, and then you have this piano text, and then the piano text is moving. Okay, right now the piano text is actually being used as a design element, so it's not really a word that we're spelling out and we want the viewer to read. But because it's a PIA, it kind of hints at piano because not a lot of words start like that. And we already established in the first 60 frames, you know, what we were talking about. So now we have uh, Jeremy playing a piano. So we've already established uh, visually what this uh, sort of riddle is all about, right? So now we're building on that and we're using the piano. Uh, letters as a design element here. And then we're also taking the the mask output out of that piano and we're using it into the the seafoam node in the background here. Okay. So this is going to happen very quickly like that. And then 
I guess it'll make a little bit more sense as you move forward. 